So today's video is going to be about running big bass in tiny rooms. Now, this is something I have some experience with. Um, as you can see, I'm in the RV project right now, and it's obviously a pretty small room. It's definitely not something people would set out to do. Um, it's a, a project with many challenges. And so in doing this, I've learned a few things that I think are pretty, pretty valuable. Uh, now, some of my tips will go against the grain, um, and some in a pretty big way, uh, but I'm really okay with that because I know what's worked for me. Um, I have some good news tips, I have some bad news tips, uh, but overall I think the, the message is a good one. Um, you know, and I have a, a final tip at the end of the video too uh, regarding speaker levels. Uh, I'll also put some links uh, to related videos in the description down below. So I'll get right into it. Um, number 10 uh, is conventional wisdom is disheartening for small rooms. Very few people have a perfect room. Uh, you know, I think most people don't have a perfect room. And some of the wisdom out there is people will say, well, you just shouldn't build a theater in a small room at all. And while that's, you know, great, you, you can't just change your room dimensions. You just can't change what you have. Um, you know, yeah, you can move. Um, obviously, you can pick a larger room if you can. Okay, that makes sense. Um, but for a lot of people, a small room is all they've got. So it you know, instead of just saying, well, you just shouldn't do it, how about how should you do it? Um, and that's kind of what I want to do with this video. The good news is, is that it can be done. Number nine, uh, this is a bad news tip, um, and mainly because of the cost. Uh, flat response subs are just as important in order to avoid boominess. Uh, to me, boominess is when it's louder at certain frequencies uh, than others, and typically the higher frequencies tend to produce that boominess. Um, cheap subs will probably make that problem worse. And I know it, it's a, I, I went back and did this um, at a friend's house, and it is a pain to integrate cheap subs um, in a big room, you know, and so it's probably worse in a small room. It's just really hard to get the, the subs integrated in such a way that they don't sound boomy, but also too soft on bass. Like they're, the, the response curve is not very flat and it makes it really challenging. So um, that gets even worse in a small room in my, in my estimation. Number eight, uh, the distance hack that I talk about uh, in the uh, bass hacks playlist, uh, is important and uh, it can make a big difference, um, you know, depending on your main speakers. If you have speakers that have, you know, the drivers that come out of the side instead of out the front uh, for the bass, uh, then, you know, like the, the Ultra Towers, um, you know, the distance hack isn't quite as important, but for most people with con conventional front firing woofers, um, the distance hack can make quite a difference. And so, uh, I'll, again, I'll put that link down in the description below. Um, and I think, you know, I, I think you'll notice it more in a small room for some reason, um, just because you notice everything more in a small room, it seems. Um, but yeah, it, you know, this is one of those things that I, I think this is a good news hack because it's a free hack to do. It's just, it's simple. You just adjust the distance on your subwoofers. Um, to that point, I want to mention that I don't adjust the distance on any of the other speakers, just the subwoofer. So I think that's worth mentioning. Um, number seven, use room correction carefully. Uh, you need to be precise in placing the microphone. Uh, other parts of the room also uh, might be kind of weird, but you want your main seats to be your priority. And so you'll see in this video, I've got the microphone propped up exactly where my head would be in the corner of this room. And if I were to not do that, it would be really boomy in that area. Now, the thing is, when you measure it in that smaller, you know, that corner, it's going to be different in other parts of the room. You have to choose what your priority is. Uh, in this case, if I didn't measure it there, it'd be really boomy in that corner. So it made a lot of sense to measure it like that. The key is you just need to accept imperfection throughout the room, but your main seats can be proper. That's the key. Number six, reduce reflections if possible. You know, reflections are bad in big rooms too, but when you are closer to the speakers, imperfections are even more noticeable. You know, things like textiles, rugs, reducing hard surfaces, and these are good practices in general, not just for small rooms, but it's worth mentioning in small rooms as well. Uh, it's, it's, it's one of those things that's good in big rooms as well, but uh, in small rooms, like I said, you're, you're closer to the speaker, and so imperfections are a little more noticeable. Number five, 
this is bad news because no matter which sub you choose, you will still have small room issues. Uh, and this is bad news because smaller, cheaper subs won't necessarily make things easier. If you, you know, look at the list of subwoofers that I have, um, whether you go with the smallest subs on the list or the biggest, most expensive subs on the list, you're going to have the same problems. You're going to have to deal with the same issues. Um, and that goes into my next one, which is number four, uh, boundary gain. Boundary gain is a big problem. Now, as I showed you before, uh, that corner shot there, uh, it would be better if I could just pull this away from the wall. If I could just move all the seating forward, it would be better. Um, thing is, I can't do that. I've, I've got them pulled away as much as I can, but you know, it, this, this whole seating is on a slide. And so I can't really pull it forward any more than it is. Uh, and I know other people, you know, in small rooms have the same issue for other reasons. You can pull it forward only so much and then you don't have a place to walk. So that's an issue. Um, if you can pull it, you know, forward as, as much as you can, it helps. Um, but you know, I understand that you can't pull it all the way away from the wall, which again goes into the idea that you want to run room correction carefully after any changes. So if you pull it, if you decide, well, I can move it three or four inches away from the wall. Awesome. Rerun room correction again. Um, believe me, even that little distance can make a difference. And if you're in a small room and you're not sure about this, try leaning back toward the wall and then leaning forward. You'll, I notice a difference in base. Um, the base is, is a little bit stronger as I move my head toward the wall, and that's that boundary gain I'm talking about. Um, so, and if you can, you know, keep seating out of the corners, but again, in this situation, I can't. So, uh, you, you've just got to do what you can do and, you know, work with the uh, room correction and be precise on your placement. Uh, number three is another bad news. Um, and uh, it's dual subwoofers are even more important. And this is absolutely against conventional wisdom. I, no one will tell you this. No one will say, well, some people will, but dual subs are just as important in a small room, perhaps more important because, um, you know, the, the importance of dual subs isn't just for seat to seat. Seat to seat's nice. Uh, the improvement in output's nice but it's really so you can hear all of the bass because you have a standing wave in a room and if you have a single sub, you, that standing wave is big and it's noticeable. It doesn't go away with a smaller room. Um, and so running dual subs really reduces that standing wave. It allows you to hear more of the bass. You don't get Swiss cheese bass, all that stuff. So it's just as important. Um, and that's bad news because it's just more expensive. Um, I mean, I'm always about, you know, splitting your budget and things like that. Um, but really, it, it's not for the output. You know, a, a single small sub will probably be plenty of output in a small room. You run duals to get more even base, more even coverage. So that's the important part. Number two, this is good news um, for the people that have this desire. Uh, it's not an absolute, but the good news is, is that you can go big. Now, I won't say that you need huge subs, okay? That's, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying you need dual PB16 Ultras in a small room. Um, I'm telling you it can be done. I'm telling you that the benefits that you get in a bigger room, uh, you can still get in a smaller room. Uh, you know, when you go from, uh, you know, smaller wattage subs to larger wattage subs, at least within the SVS line, uh, the difference primarily is in the impact of the bass, the amount of punch you get. Um, yes, they can go louder. Uh, that's, you know, absolutely, they can go louder. But uh, for me, I listen to all subs at about the same level, the same integration. And so for me, the difference between, say, uh, some PB2000s and, and these are the PB4000s in here, the difference is in the impact, the difference is in the, the, the quality of the bass. It's just better with a higher wattage sub. Um, so you're not, you know, again, I'm not telling you you need to have giant subs in a small room. I'm telling you, I'm not saying you should never do it. I'm saying it's not prohibited, as many people will tell you. Many people will tell you it'll just overpower the room no matter what, and there's nothing you can do. The crazy part is, I only run these subs a few degrees, or a few dB uh, lower than in the house. So, if that tells you anything, it's not that big a deal to run big subs in a small room. I like it, actually. Uh, one other consideration, you know, going bigger can be an issue big time for footprint. 
Uh, one of the reasons I'm looking forward to the PB3000s instead of the PB4000s in here is just to be able to walk around them. You know, you've got, it, it gets in the walkway more. And so that's another big deal is, is the footprint. Um, I wanted to run uh, cylinders initially because it would have been great in here, except for I would have had the TV out away from the wall. It just would have been kind of weird. Um, but the cylinder subs can make a, uh, a lot of difference for, pe for people that have small footprint issues uh, that need smaller subs that, you know, still pack a lot of punch, but, you know, you need floor space. So that's one issue. Uh, the only time a down firing sub like that would be a major issue is if you just have a terrible, terrible floor that's really noisy. Um, that can be overcome, and in that situation, uh, cylinder subs um, may just be the solution anyway, despite the uh, terrible floor. Uh, I say that because I have a terrible floor in the house, and it makes a big difference. Um, if your floor is well built and not so, um, it doesn't make so much noise when you stomp on it, well, it's not that big a deal. Um, number one, uh, quality room correction. Uh, this is bad news, since it tends to be more expensive once again. Um, but I really notice this a lot, um, you know, and, and again, getting a higher power AVR might seem like overkill to a lot of people. So again, this is not conventional. Um, however, the better room correction makes a huge difference. Um, you know, you can avoid using base traps and, and having to get, you know, uh, having to get a DSP to really kind of shape it yourself. Better room correction made a heck of a difference. Um, I noticed it because I, ha I started with the, P uh, the Denon X2000 in here. Uh, then I brought out the X6200, which has XT32 room correction. And I can tell you the difference was outstanding. Um, I was, at first, you know, I was dealing with this problem here. I had all the, the, the room gain in that corner and it was just way too much. I was, you know, really stressed out about it. Um, but when I plugged in the XT32, ran the room correction, uh, all the issues thinking I was gonna need to get, uh, you know, base traps and things like that, no problem, don't need them anymore. Um, which is a big help, because I didn't need to have all that extra stuff in here. Uh, it's one of those things that, at first, when I, when I used the lower room correction, man, I was like, what did I do? I made a big mistake here. Because <laughs> uh, the whole idea is it has to sound good in here because I want to have other people hear it. And if I had all that boominess in the corner, that's just not going to work out. But the good news is the X-T32 really smoothed it out and really made it just like I wanted it in the house. So that was really good. So the better room correction can really make a big difference. Um, so uh, as a final tip, um, if you find yourself closer to the rear speakers like I do, if you notice here, uh, we've got all the speakers are really close to your head. So that one's close, but even its rear speakers, a lot closer, especially when you're sitting in that center seat there. Um, so my tip there is that, you know, you want them, the, the surround channels to sound supportive, um, but not overbearing. And when they're this close, they can sound overbearing. And so when I go through and I do room correction, it sets the levels and it does a pretty good job. Um, but what I'll do is I'll listen to some music. Uh, the Eagles uh, Farewell One Tour is phenomenal for this. Um, I'll listen to it and then, you know, that one's good because it's got a lot of good surround, you know, music in it. And so uh, I'd go through and I'd listen and this speaker and this speaker back here were just a little overbearing. So I ended up backing them down, I think, like three or four db uh on the the, the level uh you know adjustment the level menu and so i just reduced the 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 sound level i did not adjust the distances so that's really important a lot of people think if you adjust the distance and say i want the speaker to be further away that it's going to reduce your um you know the loudness all the distance settings do is they adjust the timing that's really important to understand so with these speakers, I just reduced the volume uh, and that really made a big difference and it made it sound all supportive. Because before, even with Odyssey going through and setting all these different levels, it sounded like all my sound was coming from the back of the room and that's not what you want. Uh, I wanted the sound stage to be coming through from the fronts. And so redu just reducing the, le the level of the channels really made a big difference. So um, that's one of those things that I noticed in doing this whole thing. So my final point is, you know, for sure, bigger rooms tend to be easier. 
Uh, if you can put your home theater in a bigger room, it does make sense. Uh, it's just a, it's, it's less complicated. But my whole point is, don't let people discourage you because you have a small room to work with. It is doable, and overall, I think that's good news. Uh, for me, the only time room size is an issue in discussing subwoofers and things like that is when the room is massive and needs the extra output in order to fill up that room. Um, from that standpoint, anything that's, you know, I wouldn't say, oh, well, you have a small room, you need to go with a smaller sub on the list. I'd say give whatever, whatever sub you want because it's going to be uh, a, a matter of you just, you're going to have this, like, again, like I said, you're going to have the same issues from a PB1000 all the way to a PB16 Ultra. Um, you're going to have the same challenges. So I'm saying you don't have to restrict yourself to a smaller sub just because you have a smaller room. And I think for a lot of uh, base heads out there, that's, that's good news. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this video helped you out. Um, I learned a lot from doing all this. I have shoehorned uh, the PB16 Ultras into a small room in the house. And uh, again, that was one of those times where I ran the uh, Denon X2000 in there with the lower room correction. And it was good. Um, I know now had I run the uh, X6200 in there with the better room correction, the XT32, um, it would have come out a lot better. So uh, I'll put some links to some amplifiers that I think are really good uh, that have XT32 on them. Um, but yeah, so that was the biggest change. That was the game changer when it came to working with small rooms and big bass. Uh, so anyway, thanks so much for watching and please subscribe.